Okay, let's talk about finding the square root of fractions. And uh, this is something that is um, not that difficult, but there's a few additional things that we need to know in order to successfully take the square root of fractions. And uh, this is a must know for all of you out there that are studying any kind of algebra. So this is the topic of this video is uh, taking the square root of fractions. And we're gonna be really talking about uh, two properties that you wanna keep in mind when you are taking uh, the square root of fractions. So those of you out there that think you know the answer to this, okay, if this was a pop quiz, for example, and let's say you can get this, if you got this problem right, you would get an A plus in your algebra course and be uh, told you could take the rest of the year off. Okay, well, imagine if that was uh, the case. I mean, I mean, a lot of you out there would be like, I would love that. Just one question. If I could pass this one question, I won't have to take any more math. So go ahead and see you know, uh, how well you can do with this. Put your answer in the comment section. I'm, I'm not looking for a decimal. Okay, I'm not asking you to go into your calculator and say 9 divided by 10, get some decimal and taking a square root of that. I, I want you to uh, to do this problem without the aid of a calculator and type in your answer into the comment section the best you can. Uh, I know you can't put a square, a square root symbol into the comment section, but you know type it out the best you can do it, or just keep it on a uh, a piece of paper off to the side and see how well you uh, can do with this particular problem. But I'm going to go through this problem and another problem so we can get a quick little mini course on taking a square root of fractions. I'm going to go over all of this thoroughly. In just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, if you are having a tough time in math, okay, maybe you don't think you're one of these people that um, you know has like the natural ability to learn math well, or you struggle with math, or maybe you just hate math, or maybe you don't feel like you're getting enough math instruction, or maybe you're not connecting with your teacher teacher's uh, teaching style. Whatever the case is, I'm gonna tell you right now, whatever problem you're having with math, you can be successful in math, okay? If there's a will, there's a way. I've been teaching math for decades, and I uh, really take the approach to breaking things down in bite-sized, clear and understandable pieces so anyone could be successful in math, okay? so. If you're having a tough time or if you just want to get ahead, I can help you out, especially if you're at the middle school, high school, or uh, college level in terms of mathematics. Now, uh, if you're preparing for any test that has a math section on it, and there's a lot of them out there, so I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, AccuPlacer, CLEP exam, Alex exam, teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam. I can go on and on and on. There's a lot of exams out there have a uh, uh, math section, on, uh, the math, dedicated math sections are on those exams. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you absolutely must check out my full comprehensive homeschool math program and curriculum. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But uh, if you want great grades in math, you must take great math notes. Okay, so start taking better math notes and you'll see your grades just start to skyrocket. All right, let's get to this problem here. So if you had a chance to work on it, um, you know, again, put your answer into the comment section. But let's get right to it. Okay, so again, if I'm saying take uh, if I want to know the square root of um, 9 over 10, for example, in uh, most algebra classes, what we're being asked uh, to do here is not take 9 divided by 10 in your calculator and then take the square root of that and get some sort of decimal. All right, now, of course, there is a decimal value associated with that. So it's not like it's mathematically wrong, but that's not the whole idea here when we're talking about working with square roots. When we're working with square roots, we need to know this concept right here. So the square root of the fraction a over b is equal to the square root of a over the square root of b. Okay, so this is the property that you need to know. Okay, so we need to keep this in mind and we need to keep something else in mind as well. And I'm going to show you this uh, by looking at this problem right here. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. I'll just walk you through it. So I um, I have the square root of nine over ten. Okay, nine tenths. So the first thing I'm I'm going to ask myself is, well, okay, nine divided by ten. I can't really simplify this. You know, I can't take nine and divide it by ten. So let's just break this up. The square root of nine over the square root of ten, and the square root of nine, the principal square root. In other words, uh, just the positive square root is going to be three, 
and then I have the square root of 10 down here in uh, my denominator. So how many people think that this is the correct answer right here? Okay, so if you knew that, this is pretty good, okay? However, I must give you a sad face if you think that this is the final answer, okay? This is not the final answer. This is a good start. However, we have a problem here. Now, what's the problem? Well, we have a square root in the denominator. We're not allowed to leave our answers with the square root in the denominator, what we call an irrational number. So we have to do something called uh, rationalize. We have to fix this up. So 3 over square root of 10, that's what we want. Okay, that's what we, how we broke up this fraction. That's good, but we just need to rewrite this in a better way. So the way we uh, uh, can get rid of this square root, this square root of 10 in the denominator, is I can multiply the denominator by the square root of 10, but if I multiply the denominator by the square root of 10, I also have to multiply the numerator by the square root of 10. Now, just look, look at this, what's going on here. What's the square root of 10 divided by the square root of 10? Well, this whole thing, anything divided by itself, is simply 1. Okay, so this is just a 1. So I'm really multiplying this by a fancy 1. So I'm not breaking the problem. So somebody out there might be thinking, why aren't you changing the problem? No, I'm just being creative here, and I'm multiplying by a fancy 1. But when I do that, though, the advantage is this. The square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is what? Well, it happens to be the square root of 100. Okay, when you're taking this, uh, when you're multiplying square roots together, we multiply the numbers inside the square root. So that's going to be the square root of 100, and the principal square root of 100 is 10. Okay, and so that's what we want. We want to get rid of any square roots in the denominator. But then I have three times the square root of 10. And I could just write it just like this, and this is the final answer. All right, so how many out there got this right? If you did get this right, boy, I tell you, I am impressed. I must give you an awesome 1982. Um, ooh, that's not 10, 1922. I don't think they had any uh, Mohawks back in 1922. Maybe they did. I don't know. Look at that. I can't even write. 1982. 1982 a Mohawk and an A+. Matter of fact, I would just say go home. And I'll see you next year in your math class. Uh, I don't know what you're doing. You must be watching that guy on YouTube. But nice job. Okay, so that's good stuff that if you actually knew how to do this, then that's that's very, very good. But let's go ahead and take a look at another problem here and see how you do with this. Okay. Now, you can see I have all the work written out for these two problems. But we're going to take a look at uh, the square root of 40 uh, over 2. Okay, so this is a fraction as well. But when I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, uh, you just, you know, taught me, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, 40 over 2. I can break up the numerator and denominator. So I could write it this way, the square root of 40 over the square root of 2. So this is one option. But is this the best option? Well, you know, maybe not, okay? Uh, this is one way we can go, but we can also go this way, square root of 40 over 2. Well, 40 divided by 2 is 20, Okay, so I'm like, well, maybe I could just simplify this, and that ex that's exactly what you want to do. So when you can uh, divide these fractions, like in this case, 40 divided by 2, that's what you want to do. But here, this is not the final answer. Okay, the square root of 20 is, is uh, not fully simplified, so I can break up 20 as 4 times 5, okay? So this is uh, an ex uh, what we're talking about here is simplifying square roots. So if you're not really sure what I'm doing, I have additional videos in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist, or maybe you just want to sign up for like my algebra uh, courses to really learn this stuff. But hopefully you can see uh, the square root of 20 is the same thing as the square root of 5. And now there is a, a um, uh, another property of square roots, well, this right here, the square root of 4 times 5, I can kind of pull apart this big square root into two small square roots. So this, uh, I can write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And uh, this is advantageous because now I can take the square root of this 4, which is 2. Okay, so that's 2 square root of 5. This is the final answer. So if you're not really, you know, 100% um, uh, follow me on this, then you just got to do some additional review on how to simplify radicals. There's, a, you know, I'm kind of going a little bit quick and um, don't want to put too much in this video, but really kind of focusing on simplifying uh, fractions. And you can see that this way, if I went this way, let's take a look at if I went this route, okay? Well, I would have to simplify the square root of 40, and then I would have to deal with this uh, square root of 2 in the denominator. Okay, then I would have to rationalize somewhere along the point. This would be a lot, a lot of work here. Okay, 
Now, you would still get the right answer, but if I went this route, okay, this work is a lot less than doing all this work, okay? So again, when you're faced with taking the square root of a fraction, okay, you want to evaluate what, you know, what the deal is and then take the most effective route uh, forward. But anyways, uh, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, go ahead and smash that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you uh, consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over 1,000 plus math videos. Math videos, basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. I mean, uh, it's taken me that many years to post. Uh, well, I think right now I have like 1,300 videos. I don't even count. What I do is I just teach from my, uh, you know, my heart every day, really trying to help all of you out there be successful in math. There's nothing worse. You know, you've been teaching this. I've been, you know, uh, teaching math for such a long time. I hear, you know, s s uh, all the success stories, but I also hear some very, um, you know, to me, kind of sad stories. I hear a lot of adults, especially, you know, in their 50s, 60s, even 70s, even in their 80s, um, and maybe even younger students as well. I mean, I've heard so much. And, and what I'm talking about is people saying, you know what? I never pursued math because some math teacher back in 1965 told me I was bad at math. Or in 1978, there was some teacher that says, you know what? You're really not good at math. You should stick with this. And that's really, um, you know, any teacher that tells you anything like that is doing a disservice to you. Okay. And I'm just telling you right now, most of you out there can do so uh, much better in mathematics. You just really got to uh, find the right instruction. So if you've always wanted to learn math and be successful in math, I'm telling you right now, you can. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people have been robbed of their, you know, uh, interest to pursue maybe engineering degrees, whatnot, because they don't think they can do the math. Okay. So if you're interested in being a scientist and engineer, but you're scared of the math, Listen, stick with it, okay? You can do this stuff. Is it easy? No. Does it require work? Yes, but it's not beyond anything that you can uh, do. So anyways, with that message in mind, if I'm helping you out, please take advantage of all my content. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.